Uh, Harrington, what time is it? It's just 10 o'clock, sir. You're due in the grand jury meeting. Yes, I'll go in in just a minute. But uh, uh, close that door, please. Radio friends, this is your district attorney speaking. A group of racketeers has moved into the city and taken over the restaurant racket. We've been gathering information on them. But every restaurant owner has been so terrified he's been afraid to testify. But now we've got to start. One restaurant owner, Mr. Tony, was broken by the racket and sent to prison by then to keep him from talking. But we finally heard of Tony's plank and went to the prison and got him out. Now he's anxious to help us smash these racketeers. If you'll excuse me, I've got to go into the grand jury, which is meeting in the room right next to my office here. The grand jury is composed of 23 outstanding citizens who meet behind closed doors and hear testimony and decide whether that testimony warrants their issuing an indictment for the arrest of the suspect. What goes on inside the grand jury is strictly private, but I do want you to hear this one. Excuse me while I go in. Well, I seem to be a little regrettable. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. District Attorney, we've just been going over this information you've gathered about the restaurant racketeers. You say here that Mr. Tony is willing to work closely with you. Mr. Tony will tell me everything he knows. Well, uh, do you consider his life will be endangered by doing so? Not at all. And we've sent his family away to a little cottage down south. No one but my immediate staff and myself knows where they are. We even changed Tony's own personal appearance. And I doubt if even his own wife could recognize him now. We've done everything possible to protect Mr. Tony and his family from the racketeers. Who's there? The Ohio kid. Come in. You're late. Hurry up. I couldn't get here before, Duke. What are you sore about? Sit down. Want some peanuts? Ah. What took you so long? I, I had a date with a girlfriend. You're playing around with that dame too much. Now listen, kid, you got a job to do. Well, name it. You know Tony, that restaurant owner we had sent away? Sure, he's safe. You had him put in solitary so he couldn't talk, didn't you? Yeah, but he ain't there now. What do you mean, he ain't there now? Well, he put up some song and dance that he was a murderer. They kept him in solitary, but a member of the prison commission was going through the prison and heard about him yelling that he wanted to see the D.A. and confess a murder. This guy made the warden tell the D.A., and the D.A. went down to see Tony. Do you think Tony sang to the D.A.? Well, must have told him everything, or why should the D.A. remove him from the pen? The D.A.'s got Tony out? Yeah, and he's got him hit away. And you got to find where, kid. Yeah, but... Can't you give me a steer at least? There's an awful lot of guys in this world, you know. That's your job. What do you think I've been paying you for? For getting guys out of the way, but not finding them in the first place. You do as I tell you, see? Okay. And get him before he spills everything he knows. All right, all right. And another thing. That dame of yours. She knows too much. Ah, she's all right. That's what they all think. I tell you, she ain't all right. I'm telling you, she'd up and quit you for the first good-looking guy that came along. Uh, what's the matter with my looks? I'm telling you to watch her. Now, if that day makes any trouble, you're responsible for her, kid. Just remember, if there's any trouble because of her, I'm holding you responsible. You've got a gripe, Duke. Now, don't you worry about me. I've seen too many guys get double-crossed by a demon and the whole mob suffers with them. I get rid of her, kid. Maybe. But lay off, Duke. You're just gripey today. She's all right for a while. And I'll get Tony for you. Well, you get Tony, and I won't say nothing about the dame. Now, go ahead and get Tony. Right now, they're having a grand jury meeting, and I wouldn't be surprised if they was working on some of the stuff Tony has spilled. Then we would like to have you arrest them immediately, Mr. District Attorney. This grand jury has decided they want you to arrest the men who are going around making collections from these restaurants. Uh, you say in your report here that Mr. Tony will be able to point them out to you. Uh, pardon me, gentlemen, but I believe that would be the wrong approach. The hirelings of a group of racketeers are merely weak characters who do what they're told. They would be harmless if it weren't for the big bosses of a racketeer gang. But if you don't get the big boss, the gang will be operating again within three months. I see. I guess your reasoning is right, Mr. District Attorney. Yes, I think You can arrest and arrest and arrest the small fry. But you haven't got anything when you get through. Just be patient. Gather the right information. And with one stroke, you can smash the entire setup. I see. Well, good luck to you. You do just what you think is best. I'm going out with Tony now to several of the restaurants. 
He's told me when the collections are usually made. And I hope we'll be able to bump into the collectors. But instead of going out with a warrant for their arrest, we're going out with a camera. Are you nervous at all, Tony? Oh, no, sir. I'll point out the collectors the minute I see them. You think you recognize them all right? Oh, yes, Mr. District Attorney. I paid them enough money. Just call me D.A., Tony. We know each other pretty well by now. I wish I'd known you better before I lost my restaurant. I was a fool not to talk. So this restaurant is Carlos, huh? Yes, he's a friend of mine. He wanted to hire me when I lost my restaurant, but he was afraid to. Uh, This is close enough. We can uh, see. Where? Those two men going in the restaurant now. They're the collectors. Shall I snap them, D.A.? Oh, wait until they get inside the restaurant, Harrington, and then go into action. If you can, get some good pictures of them while the owner is paying them off. And forget you're one of those camera things. Just get as many pictures as you can, in or out of focus. They both carry guns. The heavy set fella hit me over the head with a blackjack one time. Look through this window, Harrington. There's better light. The owner is getting an envelope from the cash register. This will make a corking picture. Keep snapping, Harrington. Snap all you can. I've got them square in the lens. I'm taking so many, it'll almost be like movies. Well, let's get back into the car before they come out. Come on. We'll visit a couple of more restaurants with Tony. Now, Tony, you've been talking about one of the racketeers, Lucky Lynch. Do you think that he's the boss, the top man of the racket? No, D.A. There's another one they call the real boss, but I never heard them mention his name. I see. Did you ever hear Lynch refer to a boss? Yes, and I heard the Ohio Kid talk about one, too. The Ohio Kid? The gunman? Yes, D.A. The Ohio Kid always came to my restaurant with Lynch before they took it over. They'd come in and force me into a deal and... Then those two collectors you took the pictures of back there would come in and collect every month. I see. Tony, do you have any idea where the gang leaders could be found? Perhaps a restaurant that they may have mentioned as a meeting place? Uh, I don't know. uh, uh, Yes. Yes, I I heard them talk of the Harwich restaurant several times. The the Harwich restaurant. Know where it is? Oh, yes, sir. All right, you tell Harrington where it is, Tony. I'd like to get a good look at it. Uh, Keep headed just the way you are, Mr. Harrington. And then we'll turn to the right a couple of blocks down. So this is the... Well, the Harwich restaurant, huh? Harrington, get one of our investigators a job in here as a waiter. Yes, sir. If the racketeers drop in here, we ought to be able to pick up something good. Tony... Take a look into that window and see if you can see any of them in there now. Oh, they probably ain't going to... Wait. Yes. Sitting at that table near the bar. The man with the blonde girl. Who are they? Well, that's the Ohio kid and his girlfriend. Huh? They used to come in my restaurant sometimes. The, the fellow with the black hair all sleeked down. D.A., the girl's getting ready to leave. Shall I have a trail? No, not yet. It'll be easy enough to pick her up. I want to have a little talk with the Ohio kid, though. Oh, don't do it, sir. He, he'd just as soon kill anybody as not. You go back to the car, Tony, and drive it up to the next corner and wait for us there. Harrington, the kid's alone now. Let's go in and sit down at the table with him. Why don't you go with Tony, D.A., and I'll talk with him and join you in a few minutes. You don't want to bother with the likes of him. I've got a little idea, and I'd like to do it just for the fun of it. And we'll see you later, Tony. Let's go in, Harrington. Yes, sir. Hello, kid. Who are you? Mind if we sit down? Go chase yourself. I want to be alone. We'll sit down anyway. Have a seat, Harrington. I told you I want to be alone. I don't know you guys. You'll know us soon enough, kid. Hey, if you guys are coppers, you're wasting your time, see? Don't jump to conclusions, kid. Don't you know it's bad luck to drink alone? Is it? Hey, listen, you. Get out of that chair or I'll blow you out. He's threatening us, Harrington. He wasn't expected from such a well-dressed gentleman. That's a nice flower you're wearing, kid. In about one second, you'll get plenty of flowers. What do you want? Kid, this is Inspector Harrington. I'm the district attorney. Does that mean anything to you? Not a thing. You got nothing on me. Of course not, kid. We just saw you here and dropped in to introduce ourselves. What are you drinking? None of your business. I'll discount the remark. 
Finish that drink, kid. Don't let us off stop you. I'm particular who I drink with. I said finish that drink. What's this all about, D.A.? I said pick up that glass and drink. Okay. You don't have to get nasty. Now, you satisfied? That's all, kid. Now, beat it. You can't tell me what to do. I said beat it. I'll give you just five seconds. Okay. But I'll be seeing you again, D.A. He never said a truer thing in his life. (laughs) For a while, I didn't get what you were up to, D.A. Oh, so you caught on. Well, the kid didn't. Harrington, wrap the kid's glass in a napkin and put it in your pocket. I was watching how he held it. There ought to be some good fingerprints on this. We'll go back and have the prints checked. I have a feeling we'll find the kid has quite a history back of him. Hello, Mr. Harwich. Lillian. Uh, how about little kids? <laughs> <sighs> Came as soon as I could. I told the Ohio kid I had some shopping to do. So I left him at the table... Walked around the block and came in the back door. I know. I was watching you. How could you see? Say, I don't manage this restaurant for nothing. Mm -hmm. Lots of times I like to sit in my office here and see what's going on with the diners. Now, look. See this piece of frosted glass? Yeah. I scraped a little off so I could sit here and see what's going on outside. Uh, And you saw me having dinner with the kids. Yeah, and I saw plenty of other things, too. Say, you're pretty smart. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I like you so much, Mr. Harwich. Yeah? Suppose the kid finds out. Our lives wouldn't be worth two cents, Lillian. I can handle him. Well, perhaps you won't have to much longer. You know what happened after you left that table? How could I? Two men came over and sat down with him. Who were they? The district attorney and one of his assistants. Did the kid know who they were? I think so. They talked a few minutes. Then the kid got up and left. But that isn't half of it. After he left... The district attorney and his assistant picked up the glass the kid had been drinking from. Uh, I don't get it. Why did they do that? Fingerprints. Oh. See, they'll check. And know who he is quick enough. I'll go and tell him. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember, your boyfriend and his racketeers have been bleeding this restaurant. And I happen to be a restaurant man. Yeah, but they're apt to catch him now and send him to the chair. Suppose they do. He deserves it. Oh, I can't let him do that. Now, look. You said you were kind of stuck on me, didn't you? Oh, I am, Mr. Harwich. Honest, I am. Well... Well, what? Why go and tell the kid about the district attorney getting his fingerprints? Oh. You know, if the kid found out you kind of liked me, he'd kill you. Perhaps me, too. Yeah. And if I didn't say anything... Well, he may get what's coming to him. Yeah. Well, okay. You coming up to see me tomorrow? Well, I don't think I ought to take a chance to go to your place, Lillian. Suppose the kid found out. Oh, he won't, I promise. Bring up some other girl with you or something. Well... You've never had a chance to sit down and talk as two human beings. I've just seen you in the restaurant here, and we don't dare go to any place together because the kid might find out and do something. Well, if you think it's all right, I'll come up. Please. Come up tomorrow afternoon. All right, if you say so. I'll see the kid doesn't know a thing about it. And Mr. Harwich. Yeah? I won't say anything about what you just told me. Thanks, Lillian. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. There are thousands and thousands of men in this country today who have been crushed by the rackets. There are thousands of homes which have been broken, thousands of men and women who have been killed or injured for life. Organized crime is responsible for more deaths and more money losses than a great war between nations. Each year in this country alone, the crime bill exceeds $15 billion, more than $115 for every man, woman, and child in the United States. The names of all characters in Mr. District Attorney are, for obvious reasons, fictitious. Mr. District Attorney, dramatized by Phillips H. Lord, will be with you again Monday. This is the National Broadcasting Company, RCA Building, Radio City, New York.